Okay, please uh, rejoin this my stream. Okay, so here is the corresponding slideshow. It's um, basically gives the same introduction and the same uh, discussion of this topic. There are already known uh, uh, concepts and definitions such as the interpretation of a formula, the truth table of the operators. Uh, we already did uh, exercises with truth tables in the exercise class, so this is not new. Uh, of course, in the exercise class, we uh, constructed truth tables in a in a manual way, right? On a piece of paper. Just an inter interesting fact: you can also do the same with uh, software. Uh, piece, uh, certain softwares, even in Microsoft Excel, you can find uh, built-in logical functions. Uh, so, for example, logical or or logical and. And you can use them for for you know for for constructing an expression, and then this expression is evaluated uh, automatically. I'm not going to show this to you if you are interested in how to use Microsoft Excel to create truth tables. I guess you can um, uh, you can figure this out by your own. I will show you another software though. This is a free software, actually a web, web, uh, uh, web, uh, what, web portal called uh, Wolfram Alpha, which is a really cool, uh, really, really, really cool service you can use. Uh, next time I will show you how you can easily evaluate formulas. But now. Let's continue with those certain properties. So these are the the most important semantic, sorry, it's not semantic, uh, semantic properties we learn about. So first of all, when when you have a formula, uh, the first question you can ask if the formula is always true, because if it's always true, then it's a pretty interesting formula because, uh, well, this means that the formula always holds regardless of the context. Uh, yeah, of the context. So in the in the in the sorry in the lecture notes, I think there is a example with the. No, not this one with the logical low. Maybe there is there isn't. No, there isn't. So. Uh, if you want to figure out that a formula is a uh, logical law, you have to construct its truth table. And of course, being a logical law means that all the truth values below the formula are, are ones, all of them. So this one here is not a logical law because there are there there, there is there are two two interpretations where the formula is uh, evaluates to false. Uh, then uh, the next property is called satisfiability. A formula can be satisfiable if it can be true at, in at least one one uh, interpretation it is true. So if you look at this formula, it is surely a satisfiable formula because in at least one interpretation it's uh, it's true. Okay, now in six interpretations, it is true, but the, the main fact here is that there is at least one interpretation where the formula evaluates to true. So this is a satisfiable formula, but not a logical law. 
Okay, the third category, so third property is uh, is called a logical contradiction, which means uh, the formula cannot be true. So basically, it's always false. It's also called a satisfiable formula because it's the, com the it, because it's the opposite of being satisfiable. Of course, if you construct the truth table for such a formula, then you should see zeros uh, in each interpretation. This makes a formula a logical contradiction. And there is the fourth category, which is the which is much more complex than the previous three uh, concepts. So let's just continue with the definitions. So this is what I would like to talk about uh, very briefly. In the exam, you have to define those uh, those semantic uh, semantic properties. Uh, for example, you have to define what when a formula is a tautology, or in other words, a logical law. These are uh, the, these uh, concepts mean the same. So, if you look at the definition, this is the very short form of the definition. A formula F is a tautology or logical law if, and I guess you know this uh, symbol here, if for all i's, where i is a interpretation. So if for all interpretations, the formula's value under i is true. This is the notation I introduced in the first module. This denotes the value of a formula under a certain interpretation. Do you understand this uh, definition? So it means whatever value that I use in F, it will always give me one? Uh, it means, no, the formula is, uh, is uh, given in advance. So for example, I give you this formula here, OK? OK. And, yeah. I, and I ask you, could you prove that this is a logical law? Then what you should do is to check what is the value of this formula under all interpretations. An interpretation means, you know, this this is an interpretation, or that that's another uh, interpretation. Every possible every possibility. Yes, yes. This uh, is okay. the this is how you can translate it to English. <laughs> mm. For every possibility, the formula is. Is, is one. I mean, the value of the formula is mm. one. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, now we are trying to define those concepts uh, in a mathematical way because the mathematical way is the exact way. Therefore, we introduced the, the, the concept of an interpretation. And yeah, you are right. The interpretation means a possibility, a possible assignment of ones and zeros to your Boolean variables. So this is an interpretation. In the table, each row basically is one interpretation. Right. But uh, everything is, uh, is uh, discussed here at the end of the, the page here. OK, and after we define the interpretation, here we use uh, this concept in the definition of those semantic properties. So any other question, guys? No. OK, then. So now it's your turn. So here I intentional, did not intentionally finish the two other definitions. So now I would like to define when a formula is satisfiable. Satisfiable means that it can be true. I gave you an example here. For example, this is a satisfiable formula because 
there, there is at least one possibility, one interpretation or one row where the formula is true, for example, here or, or there. There must be at least one interpretation where the formula is true. So what do you think? How could we define satisfiability? Let me just help you. So let me copy, copy and paste this part from the definition of a tautology and tell me what should I change in this, in this part of the sentence. You need change for all. Yeah, let's change the for all to what? To what? What should I write there? So this means, this symbol yeah, means uh, for all. Change to the exist. Yeah, that's it. Where is it? Oh, geez, I used PowerPoint very long ago, you, you know, to, to, ah, here it is. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Bless you. That's it. That's all. That was a good one. Thank you. So this means a formula F is satisfiable if there exists an interpretation such that the formula under this interpretation is true, right? Okay, nice. Any question? Okay, if you have any question, please ask my very clever colleague who gave the hint to me. Okay, next one. Let's talk about unsatisfiability. You know, unsatisfiability means that the formula cannot be true. Cannot be true. So what should I write here? What do you think? Yeah? All are zero. Okay, so I guess you want me to copy this one to here and I I should change one to zero. Is it okay? Yeah, but if we can work on the variables, like maybe we can make the first term uh, false or maybe true so we will work on every specific variable on itself not the whole uh, equation uh, okay first of all this is correct uh, second i didn't understand your other the other sentence so what do yeah you mean? what i was saying is that instead of using all and all only specific like the symbols like that we can specify that on this equation we will only make that if q is true then the whole equation would be true not not the whole variables of the equation would be true i still don't understand so here you are talking about this equation here yeah yeah the, the one the example yeah in the example uh you mean but we are doing you mean yes, this? for general theory, right? Excuse me? We are uh, we are making the general equation not just to work on this only. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, we uh. define this concept in general. Mm. Mm. And what did you say about this example again? Yeah, maybe if we make, uh, for example, B uh, true and then, then the other side would be true, all of it, not without only making the whole variables true, but only if we make one variable is true. Hmm. Uh, it's, it's a bit complicated. <laughs> it's, it's complicated. Yeah. I'm not sure if we make P true, this is what you yeah. suggested. Mm -hmm. Then the, the other side here, P and Q and R could be false as well, de depending on what the values uh, uh, for yeah, Q yeah. and R are. Mm. But here you can see this, right? So yeah, yeah. if you check out the last four four uh, rows, four interpretations, here mm. P is true. And there is one case, this one, 
when the formula value is to to false. However, mm. p is true. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Anyway, so actually, the truth table is really great for analyzing the formula in every other in every possible interpretations. So it's really cool for uh, such analysis. Okay, thank you guys. Anyway, uh, okay, uh, check out the the module in the lecture notes. There you have to solve uh, actually the same exercise. So I made it easier for you. Uh, actually, for the last definition, there is another uh, possible solution. I I leave this to you. Okay, uh, then. Let me talk about those two uh, two further definitions because they look a little bit more complicated. Because in those definitions we are talking about not we are talking about not only one formula but a se but several formulas. So for example, uh, you will see in the module in the module that this is quite frequent that we have several formulas, actually a formula set of an arbitrary number of formulas. And we would like to know if they all satisfiable at the same time. So this means, of course, that uh, there, there must exist an interpretation such that each formulas evaluate to true at the same time. So this is a quite common analysis. Uh, in the lecture notes, you will see several examples of this one. So I'm not showing you any examples now of how to check a formula set to be satisfiable. The last concept of logical, logical consequence is even more uh, how to say more common, more, more, more interesting, because in real life, this is a very, very common. There is a very, very common question we could ask about logical statements, and this is it. So, in in most of the cases, we would like to know if um, a formula, a conclusion formula is implied by other formulas. So for example, let me tell you an example. I would like to check if uh, I would like to check if any of you will be able to pass the exam. But actually I would like to check if this statement is implied from further statements for uh, which we call premise premises so one premise could be you attend the the lecture every every tuesday the other premise could be uh, even if you don't attend the lecture uh, you at least uh, read the lecture notes module and solve the exercises and the third premise could be I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Even even if you don't uh, solve the exercises, you at least um, complete the tests at the end of the modules. So I have three premises, and I would like to check if they imply you passing the exam. So I guess you agree that this is a very common uh, type of analysis in real life and this is what you are interested in this type of uh, uh, analysis in real life okay anyway so this is what we call a logical consequence where you have several premises and we would like to know if a third uh, an additional uh, formula called as a uh, called the conclusion is implied from those premises. 
So this is a type of exercise we already solved in the exercise class. I hope you remember that we had to check every row in the truth table. So basically every interpretation, every possibility and check those ones where all the premises are true. And then in those uh, interpretations, we have to check if the conclusion is true as well. Uh, do you have any question at this point? No. Okay, guys, uh, if you don't have any question, I'm telling you uh, now I'm, I, I uh, finish with my lecture and we will, when, when uh, do we have the exercise class? Wednesday or Thursday? Tomorrow. I, I don't remember. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay. okay. Tomorrow we will definitely solve exercises of those kinds. Uh, so we are going to check if a formula is uh, logical or tautology, and we definitely will solve exercises on logical consequence. So uh, tomorrow we will practice a lot. Anyway, please check out the modules, and then uh, next Tuesday, we start with the Kahoot quiz, as I already told you. Okay, is there anything else we have to discuss at this point? No. Do you agree? Okay, uh, I would like to ask one more question. So do you feel healthy? Is there any of you who, uh, who is cold or, or have fever? Not me. No, no. OK, good to hear, because this is why we keep these classes online, not to infect each other. Actually, the number of uh, cases is increasing at the university as well. So currently we have roughly 60 uh, coronavirus cases, as far as I know, at the university, including students and, uh, and staff members. They mostly catch it because I think they go to Budapest and things like this. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Probably you are right. Budapest is, is a hotspot, <laughs> coronavirus hotspot nowadays but also in in uh, in, in uh, big cities i mean Eger is not that big but one of the <laughs> county capitals in hungary so even in Eger, the number of cases is increasing unfortunately so uh, danny tries to tell you not to go to, Bud to budapest for partying, right? Yeah, it's not a good place now. <laughs> I want to go, but I'm afraid to go there. You have to wait. Yeah. Okay. So try to to try to um, go to parties in Agar, but very cautiously, please. Okay, so uh, see you tomorrow, I guess. Okay, see you tomorrow. Okay. okay see you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you. You too.